not too long ago, our denomination, the United Methodist Church, had a mantra, a, a, a purpose, that, and it was, it was titled, Catch the Spirit. Do you all remember that? Catch the Spirit. <clears throat> I remember at first I really liked that. I began to think about it, though, and that's a dangerous thing to do. And, and I started thinking about how misinformed that could be. I mean, it's okay on the surface, but if you really consider it, it is not biblical in, in that sense. We're, we are not to set our sights at catching or getting, of grabbing and possessing, but rather we are to set our sights on allowing ourselves to be caught. There's a major difference there. Allowing ourselves to be caught by God's blessing, caught by God's Spirit. The truth of the Gospel is that we cannot find God. We can't catch God. But there are places that we can go and there are things that we can do where we are much more likely to be caught by God. Some of you are saying, I don't like football, I'm not going to watch that game. Well, I could probably ask three-fourths of you, how many football games have you watched? None. I don't like them. Well... You've never gone. You've never been a part of that culture. You know, how can you say you don't like it? A lot of us in church will say, you know, I just don't like that. You know, I don't believe I should give. I, I, you know, is it, well, how much have you participated in, and put yourself in a place of, uh, of uh, receiving that? Yeah, Pennington, I've heard you preach a thousand times. I've never gotten anything out of it. Well, that, I can understand that, but uh, how could you be here and hear these kids and, and hear this wonderful choir? Well, I just never gotten, never gotten anything out of it. Well, tell me what else you've done. Nothing. It's worthless. I come, I, go, I don't get anything out of it. Well, you can't just go through the motions. You've you got to get invested in it. You've got to put yourself in a place to receive. And where, where can we position ourselves so that we can be caught up in God's Spirit? I go to that 940 one just because it's a blast. Lawrence can't preach. But I go, I go over there. It is, it is a... And you know, some people would say, well, that's just entertainment or something. I'm telling you, those songs, and it's, I've never really been a part of it, you know, but it's a God experience, you know. When you get it, boy, that one today. What was that song called? Total Praise. Total praise. I remember one day you said, Jerry, you know Total Praise? I'm going, go, no, I don't know Total Praise. You don't know that song? No. Well, and he's talking about how powerful it is. Well, I've never, I've never heard it. You know, and when I heard it, I kind of thought, well, I've heard it, but I've never heard it. Boy, I was there today, and the Spirit of the Lord moved. You know, I, I, I really can't, but, but before, I couldn't really experience it, you see. You gotta, we got to put ourselves in those experiences before we can ever expect to get anything out of them. The prodigal son story tells about the most important of spiritual journeys. Where was that boy in the beginning? He wanted what his daddy had. He was grabbing hold, trying to control, taking, you know, trying to catch, right? And that didn't go real well for him. He got it. He, father let him go do his thing. That boy soon discovered that he wanted to be back even as one of the servants. Why? Because he was receiving at that end. You know, he was experiencing the blessings and the grace of His Father. Uh, it's the same way. We live in a world that teaches us very well to get more of what we already have enough of without asking if all this stuff 
is getting us where we want to be and providing for us what we truly need. We fail to recognize that most of what we really need is right next to us, is, is all around us. Look at Galatians chapter 5. It's uh, that part of Galatians chapter 5 that talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, peace. Have you ever tried to to catch joy? You don't grab it. You 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 can't control it. Peace. Have you ever been in a situation where you were just trying to make it happen? Uh, have you been in a church where you're going through the motions? and You know, I mean, you, you can't grab hold of these things. They are spiritual. They're, they're even relational. But you can't catch them. I, 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 you know the story about the man who was driving along. He happened to look out his window. He was going about 70, 80 miles an hour like all of us do. And he saw an astonishing sight. Uh, right there out his car door window, running right alongside of him, speeding along with the car, was a chicken. The fact that the chicken could keep up with his car was surprising, but that wasn't the kicker of it all. The thing that took the man's breath away was that the chicken had three legs. Three legs. The man pulled off at a local farmhouse to ask them about the amazing sight that he had just seen. And when he described the chicken to the farmer, the farmer admitted, yes, that was my creation. Out behind the silo, right out there behind that silo, we got about five dozen of them birds running around all over the place. We're raising them to sell to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, the driver, he, he, he exclaimed, well, my goodness, you're, you're making a fortune off those things, aren't you? Not a red cent, said the farmer. Hadn't caught one of them yet. What a huge lesson this is. Now, you, most of you who've been here enough You don't know it. You probably never understood it. But if you don't come to church, you're not going to experience what church has to offer because you can't grab it. You can't take it. You've got to experience it. You've got to put yourself in a place so that you might experience the God stuff that happens here. If you don't, Participate in giving in a deep water sense. You just kind of throw stuff like up at the bank. God box stuff. You're never going to be challenged and stressed to the point to see God move as you took Him at His word and you gave what you committed to. You know, I can't explain it. You know, you've got to do it to experience the blessing of God. There, there was a statement that was made at a workshop I attended some time ago, and the, we were talking about it. About, I, and the reason we were talking about it, the statement was the instructor said that numbers attending church matter. They do matter. And, you know, Jerry and his worry wart way, I don't even know why I worry about it anymore, but I mean, uh, people will say, Jerry, numbers, you know, that's not the important thing. You know, quit worrying about it. Numbers matter. We have right here in this church over the last six months or so uh, from comparing numbers five years past, we initially lost about 30-something average attendance. We kind of expected that with all the changes and changing worship services and stuff like that. I really hoped it would not be that way, but it, it is. A lot of those folks are going to Sunday school, but they're not going to church. Um, but numbers matter. Then, as the first of the year rolled around, uh, right before the first of the year and the first now, 
Now we've lost a total of 67 average attendance from previous years. Now one thing might be, and, we're, and, and that number showed up in, ja in January, and it might have to do with we're doing a stewardship program right at the first of the year. That's usually a low time, you know. I appreciate you being here, but I got to tell you, when people hear you're doing a stewardship drive, they, you, you, attendance goes down. But every church I've ever been in that did streaming, which we just started doing, we lost a significant number of people. We have about 120 or something like that who check into the streaming that we're now doing. I shouldn't even tell you this, but uh, uh, you don't have to be here to see the worship services. So, but, but I'm telling you, being here, numbers matter for the church uh, because each number, now listen to me, each number here represents a person. And first and foremost of anything, people matter next to God. I mean, what does it say? Love God and love one another. Number, people are what matters. When you look at those videos, and they're so heartwarming, what is every one of them about? People. People loving people, people touching people, people giving and sharing and offering under, under faith and uh, trying to do God's... But it's, it's people. When, when one of the people coming and helping with the house is talking about, I saw Jesus, well, they saw people coming to their home and they saw financial support coming from you. Numbers matter when this woman's talking today and talking about how how you know she really feels like God is is present God is present but God is present through what people and he's present through people giving y'all remember the story the the movie and there were several of them oh God that dates me I still watch them over and over again uh, uh, George Burns is God that is the perfect God, I think. I hope God is George Burns. You know, I mean... But uh, he's, he's the God person in this movie, God. And he's asked, he's being asked these series of questions. And one of the questions that was asked of God uh, is, Why, God, do you starve children? And Burns responds by saying, of course, playing God, I don't starve children. You do. I gave you enough food to go around. But you won't share it. I gave you all you need. And then I gave you the gift of each other. People matter. God does His work through you. He puts that money in your pocket and expects you to share it to make His work happen. He puts that prayer on your heart and expects you to offer it. He puts uh, those legs under you or someone to help you get to church because people matter. It doesn't happen without people. That, that's what, the, what makes the church go round. Lawrence was preaching, and I'm not going to ask him to get up here because he'll take too long. But he was talking about how a person's love, you're talking about your mother? Why aren't you saying, just let me come up there and tell the story? No, do you? Okay. His mom. He and his brother, his older brother, decided they were going to go out all night. And he says, we're coming over to the house uh, after we go out. And they meant like 4 o'clock in the morning. They come home after being out all night, dancing and carousing. This was their college days. What are y'all laughing about over here? I had a carousing because I know they were. All right. And they come home 
to discover that their mother had been up all night. Now, they're in college. They, they don't come home every night, but they told their mama, we're coming home after, after this, 4, 4.30 in the morning, come home. Their mama's got every light in the house on. She's in one of the rooms where nobody normally goes. She's dusting in there. I, I know this story, don't I? She, my mama never did this for me, I got to tell you. She's dusting in there. And, and, and the point there is, why was she up? Because she loved those babies. Grown men as they were. She couldn't rest until they got home. So she's dusting and waiting on him. And Lawrence makes a powerful statement. He says, love compels you to give. You don't love the church just by showing up and going home. When I look at the people who are making things happen in this church, they love this church. And I tell you, if this church was in danger or hurting, they'd be up here dusting all night till early hours of the morning. Love compels you to give. We need those people in the church. People matter. Thank God we've got those people. And then he went on to say, correct me if I'm wrong here, you can give and not love. But you cannot love and not give. That's from Lawrence. The message today is simple. We are not to catch so much as we are to put ourselves in a position to be caught. To do that, I want to make clear to you that for those of us who don't feel like we're caught, go into the deeper water. I think... You must be doing something superficial. I don't care if you're talking about your marriage, you're talking about your children, or you're talking about your church. We live in a day of this. When we started, it was out here. Now it's here. We, we are losing touch with one another when more than anything next to God, <laughs> people... People matter. Trying to catch the things that are good, the faith things, is like catch, trying to catch a three-legged chicken. It's not going to happen. The way that happens is to be engaged and involved and putting ourselves in a place. And again, I say I don't. I, it's the same way with your marriage, with your children. How much time are we going to spend getting the right flowers for Valentine's Day? You know, don't you know it's not about those flowers? It's about that person. How much time do we spend trying to get the stuff and pass out the allowances to our family when really it's not about that? And by the way, guys, I'm not saying don't get those flowers. But, you know, those, those things are something, but it, it's not what's important. With our families, with our children, that allowance is nearly as important as being with them. Because being with them, being present is loving them. We are not meant to catch these things so much as we will be caught by them as we put ourselves in a place to receive. And communion, what is that? Putting yourself in a place, an opportunity for God to say, you matter to me.
And then all you got to do is look to your left or your right and you're going to see that God gave us one another to love on because that's the way it is. We love God and we love one another. That's what makes it go around. You can give and not love, but you cannot love and not give. Thank you, Lawrence. Amen.